We've got 42 cameras here in Oklahoma City. You're probably going to see all of them during this next week. An overhead view of Hall of Fame Stadium as we get to our starting lineups. Brought to you by Capital One, the James Madison Dukes, 39-2 and two on the year. The best hitter in JMU history is their leadoff hitter, Kate Gordon. 68 career home runs, bunch of all-conference players in this lineup, including the starting pitcher, Odyssey Alexander, who will bat third. Whole lot of Oklahoma faithful are in the seats, the new upper deck here in 2021, and they're going to root on Shannon Sale. A few good options for Patty Gasso in the circle. She turns to her fifth year senior. Yeah, Shannon Sale has had a really strong year for Oklahoma. She's one of their super seniors, has a ton of experience there in the circle. She throws hard, good spin, and good movement. She gets a lot of swings and misses. It was June 4th, 2019, Amanda, when Kinsley Washington's single against G. Juarez scored Jackie Prober, the UCLA pinch runner. It has been 729 days, 12 hours, and 47 minutes between Jackie Prober's left hand touching home plate and this foul ball off the bat of Kate Gordon as the World Series returns to Oklahoma City. Gordon, the senior, with one of the decorated careers ever at James Madison, co-owner of the CAA home run record. And a couple of strikes to start her. 70 miles per hour from Shannon Sale. Here are the opening at bat. 18 home runs on this season for Gordon, the first team all-conference pick. And a fly ball hit toward the third baseman, Jenna Johns, a foul out. Kicks off the World Series. Well, Shannon Sale loves to throw her rise ball. She can get some good swings and misses with that pitch, but she's able to work all four quadrants of the strike zone. Low and away from righties, up and into righties, and then also down and into righties. Literally every quadrant, she is able to hit it. And when she gets pumped up, you better watch out because she'll bring it. Sarah Jubis, the junior, with a little flare toward the right side, and the second baseman, Jennings, takes it away. The National Freshman of the Year, mainly for her work at the plate, but a defensive sparkler from TRA in the first. You can tell that JMU is going up swinging in this game. Jennings gets a good read, drop steps toward her glove side, and look at the energy. This is only what, we're like three or four pitches in. This is the emotion that you are going to see this entire week from these players. Here is Alexander now. And the JMU starter takes the first ball of the game. Odyssey Alexander, second team All-American for her work in the circle and at the plate. Average of 343 with a gaudy on base percentage just south of 500. Alexander pops it up. Shale collides with the first baseman of Hanson. Shannon Sale hits the deck as she and Kinsey Hanson came together. Alexander aborted first, and you hope that Shannon Sale is okay. We thought off the bat that this was clearly going to be the third out. Shannon Sale wandering well out of the pitcher's circle. Hanson, I think, calling it too, but Sale at the same time. And as a pitcher, if you hear your first baseman call that, then it's your job to get out of the way. And that should be Hansen's ball. It will go down as an E3 against Hansen because the ball was in her glove. And you know, the more that I watch the replays, you can see Sale moving her lips, but didn't see Hansen calling it as the ball came down. I mean, Kinsey Hansen, Amanda, is normally the starting catcher for Oklahoma. Patty Gasso likes to move her players around in the field. Get them to start at different positions, and Hanson not quite as experienced a first baseman on that play. Well, Shannon's going to throw some warm-up pitches. Patty Gasso next to her in the circle. Hall of Fame coach at Hall of Fame Stadium in search of her fifth national championship for Oklahoma. 2000, the first, 2013, 2016, 2017. And a lot of unfinished business, certainly on her team's minds after the previous World Series. Oklahoma made it to the championship series, but was swept by UCLA. 
So Shannon Sale good to go. Alexander aboard for James Madison. And here is Logan Newton. Only left-hander in the lineup takes ball one. And is Ron Alexander behind the plate in game one. Tom Meyer at first, Cameron Ellison at second, and Tanya Garris at third. Ball to strike for Logan Newton, second team all conference player. He's had a very good NCAA tournament, seven for 20 with a walk. James Madison team that's eighth in the country in home runs per game. You can tell Kevin because Shannon Sale has a little bit more upspin. She's going to be more up in the zone to be able to throw a low rise and expand the zone with the rise ball that will be more up at the eyes. She's going to get a lot of pop ups. We've already seen it here in this game. The first three hitters hitting the ball in the air. And JMU again is being aggressive early in the count. That's in the dirt for ball three. There is Lauren Laporte, head coach in her fourth season at James Madison. Took over for Mickey Dean when he left and went to Auburn. Told us she had the chance to join him on the staff, but she has continued to build a monster here. <laughs> on a 3-1, strike two for Newton. The first trip to the World Series. For the Dukes of Purple and Gold, their 20th season of softball, ninth NCAA tournament. They have made it to the Super Regionals twice before, lost at home to LSU in a hard-fought series in 2016, were swept at UCLA and the Los Angeles Super Regional two years ago. First school outside the Power Five conferences since 2014 in Louisiana to make it to the World Series. On another 3-2, Newton stays alive. She'll see at least eight pitches from Sale. So here you go, James Madison. This has been building. This is not just an overnight sensation. Super Regionals again in three out of the last five postseasons. And finally, they knock down the door. Yeah, and that's a big motivation for a lot of these veteran players who have played in those Super Regionals was to get here, to break through, to make it to this field. Another pop-up and another one out of play. I mean, and you look all throughout their lineup, they have a ton of seniors, of course, led the way by Gordon and Odyssey Alexander, but a lot of juniors as well. It's a team that just had that mindset, Kevin, that this postseason is going to be the season that we do it, because if not, we're done. Lauren Laporte said, look, we've been knocking at the door for five years. The seven seniors were ready to get over that wall. Maybe a mixed metaphor, but it works all the same. Wall, door, whatever, they're here. As Newton wants to make the most of her stay, fouling off pitch after pitch, she'll see at least 10 from Sale. I love the way that JMU is coming out early in this game and swinging the bat, just looking fearless, not looking intimidated. I mean, they could be called the Cinderella story, and their first game is against number one Oklahoma, who has just been the powerhouse all year. Another 3-2 and a ground ball to second. We will see the powerhouse Oklahoma lineup for the first time in these World Series. Jennings, Allo, and Hanson to swing it after a scoreless sale first. First inning error, nothing more for James Madison. And the best offense that maybe we've ever seen in college softball. The Oklahoma Sooners will bat their starting lineup presented by Capital One. If you like 300 hitters, if you like 400 hitters, this is the lineup for you, folks. 63 runs in just five games, the second most home runs in college softball history. Freshman of the year to start, player of the year bat second. Hansen tied for seventh in the country in home runs. Jada Coleman as good an all-around freshman as any. On and on it goes. It is a daunting task for any starting pitcher. But James Madison does have a good one. Odyssey Alexander, the second team All-American. Yeah, Odyssey Alexander has had such a good year. 1.14 ERA on the season. She has the ability to be dominant, to be shut down. But man, she will have a tall task ahead going up against Oklahoma. 186 strikeouts, just 117 innings. 
A James Madison record 19 K's in 10 innings in a tournament opener against Liberty. Alexander to T.R.A. Jennings to start the bottom of the first. And a strike, 69 miles per hour. The National Freshman of the Year, T.R.A. Jennings. What's she done in the NCAA tournament? Not much. 10 for 17, seven doubles, one home run, four walks, ho hum. Jennings chases one, and Alexander is ahead 0 2. A lightly recruited pitcher, Odyssey Alexander, out of a small town outside of Harrisburg from Boynton, Virginia. Longwood was interested in her. Division three schools were interested. She is at James Madison. She is in the World Series in her fifth year. Seven start in the postseason for Alexander, who's gone four and one, got a save in a re-entry situation. And she gets Jennings to hit a ground ball to short. Sarah Jubis throws out T.R.A. Jennings. That off-speed pitch that she just got Jennings out on is going to be important because her favorite pitch is her rise ball. It sets up everything else, just like her curve ball. She's able to get swings and misses, like in the at-bat to Jennings. But she has a couple of off-speed pitches, the changeup that you see there, and then the off-speed drop that she just got Jennings to roll over on. That changeup, that off-speed drop for changing speeds is essential today against Oklahoma. How thrilled are you right now if you're in the James Madison dugout at what you saw that first at bat? A swing and a miss and a ground out, you're loving it. Here's Jocelyn Allo now. So the National Freshman of the Year to start and the National Player of the Year to follow. Allo announced a couple of days ago as the award recipient. Beat out Gabby Plain and Rachel Garcia. Latter of whom we expect to see tonight, UCLA, Florida State. 2 0 for Allo, who's hit 30 home runs on the season, three of them in the NCAA tournament. She has tied her own record and Lauren Chamberlain's record for the most home runs in a single season in Oklahoma history. 84 in her career. If you're watching Oklahoma for the first time, Keep your eyes on 78, who has already established herself as one of the great hitters in the history of this sport. She is going to return next year. She's 11 shy of Lauren Chamberlain's all-time record, so assuming health, she should shatter that in 2022. a lot of those too. Allo with her 35th walk of the season. It comes on four pitches. The thing about pitching against Oklahoma is that they're not going to swing and miss at a ton out of the strike zone. We saw Jennings do it, but it's a rarity. It puts pressure on Alexander. It puts pressure on any pitcher that faces them. They have to come around the strike zone. It's an Oklahoma team that has walked now 96 more times than it struck out. Another one of those offensive numbers that just doesn't seem real. Here's Kinsey Hansen, second team All-American. Hansen was in a bit of a power drought going into the Big 12 tournament. 18 games without a homer, then promptly hit six home runs in her next eight. 21 on the year, and a swing and a miss from Hansen. So that rise ball has bedeviled Jennings and Hansen so far. You can tell the ball just explodes out of her hand. It just jumps, late movement. She throws hard. That last pitch coming at 71 miles an hour up and in on the hands. Hanson into center field, and Sullivan is there. Michelle Sullivan, she'll throw back at first, and Allo is in safely on out number two. She went up and in on the hands and then went to that off-speed drop, dropping it to 60 miles an hour after 71 and able to get Hansen off the end of her bat. Just an easy pop-up for the JMU defense. Patty Gasso's team 50 and two, only losses to Georgia and Oklahoma State, who are the teams playing in our next game 
amusingly enough. Division one ranks first in average, first in runs. They're also the best defensive team in the country by fielding percentage. Jada Coleman, a first pitch attack. And Odyssey Alexander, welcome to the World Series. A scoreless first inning against the mighty Oklahoma Bats. It's a cliche comparison to say David versus Goliath. James Madison would certainly say we're no David. The success they've had, but there are some stark contrasts in program success here. Oklahoma, four national titles, 14 trips to the World Series. James Madison is here for the first time. And for more, let's check in downstairs for the first time with Jalen Johnson. Thanks, Kevin. Like you said, this Oklahoma program is no stranger to this field, but James Madison has made a lot of noise, the new kids on the block, to get to this moment. And they've gained some pretty notable fans along the way. And I talked to one of them last night, Terrell Owens. He's been sending out tweets about James Madison since their Super Regional at Missouri. And he said he just loves competition. I asked him, what is the connection for you and James Madison? And you know, he said, he went to UT Chattanooga, so not a huge school, and just loves when those quote-unquote smaller schools have been knocking at the door for so long and finally break through. But he made sure to also give some love to Odyssey in the circle. He loves her game, loves the competition, but he also said he is from Alabama, so not to get it twisted that he's rooting for the Crimson Tide. Well, if it is a Duke's <laughs> Crimson Tide Championship Series, uh, Jalen, it'll be a tough one for Teal, Ooh. but that's so cool. Love to see this from Terrell Owens. Congrats to the JMU softball team. Good luck the rest of the way. He is Team Bama, though. Uh, Ron Rivera, the Washington football team head coach, also reached out to JMU. So much fun to see the support this team has picked up on the way. And we asked Lauren Laporte about that. She said, look, at one point or another, everybody's been on a Cinderella story type of team in their life. Yeah, she said that there's always the underdog vibe with the mid-major programs. And it's true. People doubt you over and over again. And she's been a part of this JMU program for almost a decade now. And so she's used to that feeling. Coached at a mid-major school pr uh, prior to getting to JMU. So she's used to it. But look at them getting here. And they did it in a big way. Batter is Madison Nyokas, number five hitter in the second. And Shannon Sales' rise ball is a wayward one for ball two. Nyokas, the fifth year senior from Chicago, CAA Defensive Player of the Year, first team all conference. Heck of a stolen base threat if she can get on. I know that you can't win the World Series in the first inning of the first game, but for the way that JMU has come out, fearlessly swinging the bats. And then with the way that Alexander pitched in the first inning, looking not nervous at all. Six pitch to Naokis, that's in the dirt. You can't win the World Series, but if you face Oklahoma and give up six in the first, as a lot of teams had, you might feel like you're out of it right away. Especially, too, it's hard to play Oklahoma in Oklahoma City because it's basically a home game for them. Everybody is cheering for them. Second full count for sale, and she gets Naokis swinging. First strikeout of the World Series comes to Shannon Sale. She kind of blends her curve and rise ball here. It's more down the middle of the plate, but you see that late break away from Niokas to be able to get that swing and miss, backward rotation, moving up and away, curve rise. And now ball one to Lindsey Meeks. Did we have fun talking to Lindsay Meeks yesterday? My gosh. Oh my gosh, she had us rolling. <laughs> so shortest, funny. shortest player in the World Series, four foot 11, first team all conference, was not a starter until this season. 13 starts her first three years. And Lauren Laporte refers to Lindsay as our hype man. Had an amazing year, tremendous eye. Smaller strike zone, uses it to her benefit. And on 2-0, and oh, Meeks takes ball three. Yeah, we had a chance to sit down and talk to her, and not only did she have us laughing, she had us inspired, telling everybody not to give up on your dream. She tweeted this out. It got thousands of retweets and likes, and she was told that she was too short. She's 4'11", and look where she is now.
Out of Westerville, Ohio, Lindsey Meeks. Ready for a 3 1 from Sale. <laughs> and that's a strike. <laughs> 39 walks leads the team by quite a bit. With the Dukes faithful watching on. Meeks fouls away a 3-2. You know, the one thing about that tweet, too, is that she felt like some softball celebrities reached out to her with Gwen Speckis, who played at Oregon, Sam, Sam Fisher, who played at LMU. She was, like, just so geeked up by the fact that these softball players reached out to her and that, they, that she inspired them. Strike three swinging, 71 from Sale, who is bringing the heat here in the second. to get a low rise. You see that Meeks swings just underneath that pitch. He's able to throw the rise ball through the zone. When Sales' rise ball is able to be thrown on multiple different levels, that's when she's tough to hit. Ball one now to Hallie Hall, designated player for JMU. Redshirt sophomore Hall. 0 for 11, looking for her first hit in the NCAA tournament. Second team all-conference pick, though. <laughs> Basically, everybody in this lineup is an all-conference pick. When you go 39-2, and two, you yeah. tend to have a lot of them. Cruise through the CAA. Their only loss was to Elon. Only other loss of the year. Game two last weekend against Missouri. They rallied to win game three in Columbia. <laughs> One and two for Hall. Seems like Shannon Sale is just spinning the ball better in this inning than in the first, getting more swings and misses, being able to spin these pitches through the zone, through the strike zone. In the air to left, Taylor Snow and a foul ball makes the catch. All out effort from Taylor Snow in left field. This ball just hung in the air all the way to foul territory, and Taylor Snow was so focused, understanding that the wall was right there. But it's the World Series. You don't care if you run into the wall. You'll do anything for an out. Just a few of the 146 home runs that Patty Gasso Sooners have hit this year. 12 shy of the all-time record, the 2010 Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. They've homered in 50 games. They've not homered in two. They've scored nearly half of their runs on a ball that leaves the yard. They're liable to go yard at any point in the game, at any part of their lineup. So good all year. This is Grace Lyons who opened her season with a three home run game against UTEP. 14 for her on the year, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And a second team All-America to shortstop. Oh, and two to Lyons who's had a great career. Coming into the game started all 139 of her career at short. In the NBA playoffs, are kicking into high gear late in the first round. Game six tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. The Clippers and the Mavericks. Dallas leads the series after a win last night. Road teams won all five. Luka Doncic, 42 in the win. 9 Eastern, 8 Central, ESPN. NBA countdown one hour earlier. Cool 13-28 OPS for Lions, who is the number five hitter on this loaded lineup. And a 1-2 from Alexander. To a two. You know, the one thing that Grace Lyons told us earlier this season, and we heard it from multiple Oklahoma players just yesterday, is how prepared this Oklahoma team is for every aspect of their opponent. They study them. They know what the opponent's going to do before they even do it at times. 
Lyons goes down swinging. Alexander with a rise ball for her first strikeout. But what I don't think that you can prepare for, even if you watch Odyssey Alexander on tape over and over again, you can know that the rise ball is coming. But what you don't know is how much it is going to have that late break and just explosion out of her hand. She's throwing hard, she's throwing with a heavy ball, and she's getting some major swings and misses. Her first strikeout of this game, her 187th of the year. Here's a bunt from Mendez. Alexander, very good fielder in time to first. The second baseman, Nyok, is covered, and Mendez is erased. She can do it all. She is such a good athlete. The minute that this bunt is put down, I can tell you in her head, she's thinking, you're not going to get me. Good job by Nyokas to be able to get to first base, not be surprised. A bang bang play that JMU plays perfectly. Nyok is the conference defensive player of the year with a quick cover at second. One to four on the bunt and two down. Batter is Lindsey Elam. And Elam pops it up out of play. Five outs recorded by Alexander. One walk to Allo. No hits allowed. Elam, the second year captain, trying to break through. She's had an incredible postseason. Seven for 11, five extra base hits. We're going to try not to overwhelm you with Oklahoma offensive numbers, but it's hard. I mean, you look at the screen and you go, that's a three hitter. That's a leadoff hitter. She's batting seventh. <laughs> Everybody is great in this lineup. That smoked foul. It's numbers that we haven't seen in a long time, if ever. Talks of them being one of the best offenses, if not the best offenses in the history of the sport. What do you think? I would say they are. I'd say it's like A&M 07, <laughs> Oklahoma 21, neck yeah. and neck. Yeah, maybe 08. I think we had maybe a little 08. bit better that year. <laughs> Elam fist one away, still one and two. Alexander throwing hard and high, 71 on that pitch. Yeah, just not scared to go inside these right-handed hitters. Kind of wondered what we'd see from Odyssey Alexander. Very emotional when we talked to her yesterday. Seems so thrilled to be here, so stunned that she made it. She does not look one bit afraid of the spotlight. And another strikeout will show you that. 70 miles per hour for Odyssey. Book in K's in a 1 2 3 second. First game of the 2021 World Series with Oklahoma chasing a fifth title and acclaim as one of the best teams ever. UCLA is the defending national champion way back in 2019. They're the two seed. Three teams seeking their first title. They're all on this side of the bracket, including the two teams we'll see in our next game, unseeded Georgia and number five, Oklahoma State. Look at that upper deck, Amanda Scarborough. Isn't it beautiful? It sure is. And look, it's the first game, and it is packed here. And all those people get to say, they're at the first game in the upper, uh, there is an upper deck, the Women's College World Series. Capacity out to 100%. I suspect if this is a good game, there are going to be about 13,000 more that said they were at the first game in the upper deck. Here's a ground ball from Lauren Burnett. Jennings has made two defensive gems in the game, but this throw not in time. A great snare by Jennings at second, but her throw deemed late, and the freshman Burnett is on. Oh, I thought that was close at first base, and a lot of these fans, I think, thought that Jennings got her out. The focus of grabbing that hop, that was such an unbelievable play. Look at right there to be able to get her glove at exactly where that ball was going to come up, and I think that she got her. Patty Gasso is going to ask about it. There is no video replay here. So it'll go down as an infield single for Burnett. One more look.
barely, I mean, by a hair. That's tough for an umpire. It's bang, bang, and that actually, when we really slow it down with high frame rate, was a lot closer right there. Just gets her by what? Was that a quarter of a step, a tenth of a step? What are we going to call that? Uh, well, let me break out my ruler. <laughs> uh, An eighth of a step. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it looked to be more obviously out than it was on the replay, but as you look at how close that was, hardly blame Tom Meyer at first base for that one. So now a bunt laid down by Michelle Sullivan, and it's bobbled by Johns. Oh, trouble on the infield for Oklahoma. First and second, nobody out as the Dukes' eight and nine hitters come through. We talk a ton about the Oklahoma offense, but the Oklahoma defense and their fielding percentage, one of the best in the country, only 17 errors all season. And good execution by JMU and Sullivan to be able to lay down the bunt, and Jana John just bobbles it. A sacrifice bunt and E5. Pinch runner is Kylie Thress oh. at second as Gordon gets a piece of strike one. The thing is about Jana Johns, transfer from South Carolina, one of the few Oklahoma players who doesn't have Women's College World Series experience, getting her first taste of Oklahoma City in a big way. A ground ball from Gordon White of Johns. Let's check in downstairs with Jalen. You guys have been talking about capacity and how full this stadium is right now. And I know there's a lot of red, but this purple and gold that I'm sitting in front of right now, they are making their presence known. And I talked to fans before and they said they don't have any nerves. They support their team. They encourage them and they are ready to see their girls compete today. And they have put on a show for them so far. Jalen, it's a long way from Harrisonburg, but they're making their presence felt loud and clear. The James Madison cheering section. Most of the season, only about 100 fans allowed at home games for JMU, so they are soaking up this opportunity. Yeah, they're loud here. They're really loud on Twitter. Very passionate on, on the Twitter. I can't believe how old you sound when you say the Twitter. <laughs> I know. Drop the the. It's kind of sad. As Justin Timberlake, Sean Parker would say, <laughs> just Twitter. Two and two for Gordon, who's been a monster this year, over 500 with runners in scoring position. JMU trying to break through in the third. And Gordon goes down swinging. Strikeout number three for Shannon Sale. Again, she's able to get Gordon to swing underneath this pitch, a low rise ball inside corner. That is such a good pitch. She has so much movement on that pitch. Check out the ump cam. Our first and uh, hopefully not our final use of ump cam. Ron Alexander, the World Series. Here's a fly ball from Jubas to deep right center. It is gone. A three run blast on the first pitch from Sarah Jubas. James Madison in the lead, 3-0 in the third. We've waited two years, and quickly we are in the midst of chaos. Shannon Sale went with the off speed, and Jubis was timed up, ready for it. It was a mistake about belt high, and Kevin, that ball just continued to travel, just barely over the fence in right center. Sarah Jubis with her first home run of the NCAA tournament. Her 11th of the season, and that is a scoreline that not a lot of folks expected to see here in Oklahoma City. And the reacts that we get here at this tournament, especially when you put the first runs on the board in 730 days, is just priceless. We it's talked to her yesterday, man, and she said just 
I never thought I'd be able to be here. I mean, she ran out of words talking about what this experience meant to her. Yeah, and I was going to go back to that conversation too, Kevin, because she was so soft-spoken, of course, very emotional about being here, but that's that swing, not soft-spoken, big. We've been told that uh, the umpires have just issued a warning to the James Madison dugout for coming out. <laughs> but who cares? You get the first three of the World Series against Oklahoma. Rush the field for all we care. Alexander with a line drive to center. And Coleman is there after the visit from Jen Rocha, the Oklahoma pitching coach, to settle down sale. They just continue to be aggressive early in the count. Logan Newton. If there's been one problem for sale of late, she's been so good this year. She had given up multiple home runs, two of her last three starts. And a home run allowed today to put the Dukes unseated in the lead. Well, and you think about it, Kevin, it's one thing to hit a solo home run. You're going to give those up, and it still gives JMU some momentum. But it was a three-run home run and a missed call at first base that was really, really close, and then an error. So two on after a couple of mistakes. Not a lot of deficits for the Sooners this year. 34 of their 50 wins have come via the run rule. Some adversity for Patty Gasso's team in the third. Joy and exultation for Sarah Jubis of the James Madison Dukes. The dream is to get here. The goal is to compete when you get here. JMU up on the number one team in the country 3-0. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. 100% capacity here in Oklahoma City, and it looks like pretty close to 100% filled. James Madison, the first team on the board at the 2021 World Series. Sarah Jubis with her 11th home run of the season, a three-run shot. It is the unseated Dukes, three, and the number one Sooners, Nothing. First time in the tournament, Oklahoma hasn't scored in the first two innings. They don't have a hit in the first two innings. Only one walk against Odyssey Alexander. Whether or not she expected to be pitching with a three-run lead against Oklahoma, she is now. And a strike to start against Janet Johns. Another powerful bat in John, South Carolina transfer. 11 home runs on the year. Alexander just 11 pitches in each of the first two innings. Two strikeouts in the second. Both swinging against Lions and Elam. And another swinging strike. She's just continuing to throw that rise ball up and inside and getting Oklahoma some big swings and misses. Probably the biggest swings and misses that I've seen out of them all year. That's a ground ball to short, and Jubis commits an error. So Johns, who committed an error in the top of the third, reaches on an error from the home run hitter. The Women's College World Series Championship Finals begin Monday, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The World Series is at 100% capacity, so now's your chance to catch all the action here in person. For tickets, go to NCAA.com slash WCWS, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Scored a base hit, actually, for Johns. Would have been a tough play in the hole. And either way, the leadoff runner on for Oklahoma in the third. 
Now Taylor Snow. Only her seventh start in left field this season, Snow made that great diving catch of the second. Played shortstop at Auburn's, played mainly first base here. That was swung through off the glove of Burnett. Or was it? No, foul tip is being called by Ron Alexander, so John's going to have to go back to first. Patty Gasso's not so sure about it. Hmm. I'm not either. Live, I thought that it was indeed a foul tip. So. I don't think so either. Snow down the left field line. Kate Gordon is out of room. It's tough, Kevin, to grab the lead and then the very first batter of the next half inning after you grab the lead, commit an error. Just you want to be able to hang on to that momentum. It feels the same as a leadoff walk after you grab the lead, especially when you're at the bottom of the order, which maybe has a little bit more breathing room than <laughs> the rest of the Oklahoma order. But Jennings looming on deck. Snow into left field, and the first two are aboard for Oklahoma. Good two strike hitting here by Taylor and Snow, expecting something a little bit more up in the zone, but it's not up enough, and she's able to get her barrel to it. In the middle of the top half of the ball just shooting it the other way. Fifth hit of the tournament for Snow. And after JMU had the eight and nine hitters on to start the top of the third, Oklahoma answers in kind. Now T.R.A. Jennings. First pitch attack for Jennings and a drive to center. This game is tied. Number 26 for Jennings. And the nation's RBI leader picks up three more to tie the score. Jennings goes up again, expecting something up in the zone. And she's able to execute her game plan. She knew it off of her bat. These Oklahoma hitters are going to start making adjustments on this rise ball and up and in pitch that she got her swinging one time in her first at bat and she sends it so deep. A 10 game hit streak now for Jennings who is alone in second place in the country in home runs. And the Sooners move within 11 of the all time record. It could be just a weekend's work for them. 0 oh, 2 for Jocelyn Allo. How weird is it that it's basically the same thing happened for JMU an error, a hit, and then a three run home run on the first pitch of the at bat? It's exactly how they scored. This has been fun, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Pitch number 34 in a 3 3 tie is low for ball one to Alo. Two years worth of pent up World Series energy and emotion all coming to a head here in the third inning. Three run home runs in each half. And now the nation's home run leader. Otto takes ball two. And I think that what Alexander needs to do second time through the order is use her curveball more. And then if she goes up and in with that rise ball to these right handed hitters, she has to work a little bit more inside than what she did in the first inning, is they're going to be expecting that pitch on their hands.
Allo walk to the first. And she'll golf one to right field here. Long run for Newton, and that pops in. A wide turn for Otto. She will hold it first. A single is Oklahoma's fourth consecutive hit of the third. There's so much respect for the power that Allo has with the outfielders of Gordon, Sullivan, and then Newton out in right field. So that ball was in the air for a long time. It was hit off the end of her bat. It was an off-speed pitch. It looked like Alexander and JMU got Allo out. But it's because of the fact that Newton was playing all the way out there on the warning track, couldn't get to it. So two singles, a home run, another single. Still nobody out the third. And Kinsey Hansen with a first pitch foul ball. That would have been a big out, Kevin, to get Allo. Especially after being ahead of her 0-2 in the count. Yeah. Opportunity missed for JMU. And now a strike swinging to Hansen 0-2. Well, the stunned silence that had hung over the stadium lasted for about five minutes, maybe. Oklahoma, the nation's most explosive, relentless offense, with an immediate answer here in the third. It's exactly what you want to see out of your team, too. It doesn't matter if you're wearing an Oklahoma jersey, a Georgia jersey, FSU. It doesn't matter. You want your team to be able to punch back. You're going to take some punches here. It's the Women's College World Series, but you have to be able to respond. Oklahoma didn't even waste any time. There's a world, I think, in which if Oklahoma comes back to win this game, Patty Gasso is going to say being down 3 nothing might have been the best thing for us. <laughs> Always trying to talk about her team as the underdog and, and find ways to instill an underdog mentality, which is really hard to do when you run rule everybody. But she has kept at it. Continue to remind her team that you haven't peaked yet. Now there's a terrifying thought. <laughs> One two for Hanson. Off the fists and foul. Well, remember they had won 40 in a row. And they went on the road to play Georgia and they lost the first game of the doubleheader. Georgia broke their win streak and that was a big turning point for this team. As any loss teaches you something, as any bat at bat teaches you something, Patty Gasso really looks back to that loss against Georgia as a a turning point and a big moment for this team. Came back to win later that day. Run ruled Georgia the next game of a doubleheader. Hansen goes down swinging. Alexander finally recovers her third strikeout. Jenny getting that first pitch of her at bat off of Alexander and just the emotion that you saw again out of Oklahoma, all the runners on base and Jennings threw their hands in the air, knowing that a swing tied up the game. The National Freshman of the Year. Third time Oklahoma's won that award in just seven years of National Freshman of the Year hardware. First time ever a school's won National Freshman and Player of the Year with Jennings and Otto. This is one of the other two finalists at the plate now for freshman of the year in Jada Coleman. First team All-American who has reached base in 43 consecutive games in 51 out of 52 this year. Only Arizona State way back on the 26th of February kept Coleman off the base paths.
22 pitches in the first two innings for Alexander. This is her 25th in the third alone. And it catches the corner for strike two. And it seemed like it took Jada Coleman, in her words, you know, forever to get here. She was committed for five years before she was able to put on that Oklahoma uniform and early commit. Went on a recruiting visit with uh, our own Aaron Miller way back when. In the air to left field, and that is caught by Gordon. Great jump by Kate Gordon to take away a hit from Coleman. Kate Gordon was able to cover a lot of ground. Again, she was playing pretty deep, and you could just tell that the senior was determined for that ball to not be able to hit the ground and barely gets her glove underneath it. Thought that was going to be another bit of bad luck in this inning for JMU with one fallen. So back to back outs after the four straight hits. And now Grace Lyons. Seventh batter of the inning. And a first pitch high. Lyons struck out swinging at a rise ball her first time. One of three strikeouts in the game for Alexander. It's pretty good rebound after that home run by Alexander with the way that she attacked Jocelyn Allo in that next at bat and then struck out Kenzie Hansen with the curveball and then getting that Coleman out. You seen her change anything? Maybe going to that curveball mm -hmm. a little bit more. I'm giving her the signs up here like, hey, throw your curveball a little bit more. <laughs> they haven't seen that much of it. And it's your favorite pitch. Throw it. That's tampering. <laughs> Nobody worry from the NCAA. I'm not actually doing it. Well, well Odyssey did tell <laughs> us yesterday that she actually learned how to pitch by watching your YouTube videos. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So I would suggest she listen. Because it's gotten her this far. Not a lot of pitches in this inning, too. That's 30 now in the inning as Burnett will come out for a chat. What did you learn about yesterday talking to Odyssey Alexander? What, what did you learn about the way she likes to pitch? She loves to be athletic and determined to prove herself, to prove to everybody else that she is an athlete. Talked to us about throwing into a well in her backyard, and she just didn't want to pitch that way, but she also wanted the ground balls that came off of the well. She wanted to prove that she was a true athlete on both sides of the ball and wants the ball in her hand and also at the plate. Thinking about the way she fielded that bunt in the second inning, too. That was yeah. the kind of play that the well would make you feel happy about. This is the homemade pitching target for Odyssey Alexander from back in Boynton, Virginia. And her grandpa Washington spray painted those targets on the well in her backyard, and that's what she pitched into with one ball. Sometimes she'd throw it over the well and would have to go and chase it, as every pitcher has done in their life before. And if you'll notice, the middle block there was pushed in because Odyssey, even at a very young age, knew how to hit her target. Told me she would just pitch 24 7 out there. With those YouTube videos, too, just being able to watch any pitcher, any coach that she could get her hands on and go in her backyard and just teach herself how to pitch. It's really incredible. Another 2 2. And a pop up from Lions. And this is out of play. Jalen? Yes, thanks, Kevin. Odyssey was saying that in her backyard, her grandfather was the one that was helping her out there. Sometimes he would go get balls just because she didn't feel like it. And he's the reason that she is here today. Her grandparents could not be here this weekend, but she said she is playing for them, and they are so, so proud of her watching from home. Gosh, we could tell how proud she was yesterday talking about FaceTiming her grandfather, Washington, after the Super Regional win over Mizzou. We know they're watching and loving every second of it. Outside the Lions, and this long at bat gets longer. Three and two now for Grace.
Pitch number nine coming to Lions here in the third. And a call strike three. Two strikeouts for Alexander to escape the third. We'll talk to James Madison's head coach, Lauren Laporte, after this from Jennings. That Jennings home run on the first pitch of her at bat, the National Freshman of the Year, tying up this game. Welcome back to OKC. We're all tied up here at, and I'm with Coach Laporte. Coach, you said that you wanted your team to feel the moment but not become it. How do you think they're handling the stage today? I think they're doing a great job. I'm really loving what our hitters are doing right now, taking the count deep, uh, passing the bat, getting runners in scoring position, and then, you know, Sarah Juba's coming up big, coming up big for us again and, and getting it over the fence to get us up. Because we know, we know this offense is going to score runs, um, so we got to make sure we do the same. And in that third inning, bats came alive from Oklahoma. As you said, you knew they would. What are you telling Odyssey in the circle to keep her calm and make sure you're keeping her focused? Just stay cool, calm, and collective. You know, like, like she always does, have each other's back. Um, you know, we're going to have to make the plays, and I think, you know, the defense knows that. And we just had a little bit of a, a bad hop um, at shortstop to get that in and started. But um, we're, we're right in this, and that's exciting. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Lauren Laporte, her James Madison team unseated. They were actually the three seed out of four in the Knoxville Regional. Beat Tennessee and Liberty to get through that. Beat Missouri in the Columbia Super Regional. Georgia in our next game is unseated. The first two unseated teams at the World Series since LSU in South Florida nine years ago. I just can't believe it's been that long. And love to see the upsets just as a fan. And that's nothing against Florida and Missouri, the two teams that they upset. but. It just makes the game so much fun, and I think that it makes even next year mid-major teams, other teams feel like, hey, we can make it to the World Series too. Two out of the last three postseasons, we saw all 16 national seeds advance out of the regional round. We did not see that this year. Also at Virginia Tech is an unseeded team. Advance out of Tempe. They took UCLA to the wire before falling in three games. And we'll see Georgia and Oklahoma State next. Bulldogs lost seven in a row to end the year. 5-0 and in the NCAA tournament. 2-1 and one for Madison Iokas, number five hitter. Leading off against Shannon Sale in the fourth. First three innings for Shannon Sale. What stands out to you? I think she's been solid. I, I really do. She's had a couple of unlucky breaks with the air and then the, the close play at first base that led to that three run home run. But I like the way that she's spinning the ball through the zone. Like that, but just a little miss there and end up spinning too much in her back elbow. It's going to be a hit by pitch. And Sale looks like she can't believe it. Nick Niokas. And the leadoff batter is aboard in the fourth. Trying to use that rise ball. Up and in, it just barely, looks like the front elbow. Yeah, just barely hits it. A little bit of a lean in there from Niokas, maybe. Lindsay Meeks <laughs> squares to butt, takes a strike. You know, Sailor told us that she feels like she's throwing harder right now, and she couldn't quite pinpoint exactly why but being able to consistently throw 70 miles an hour it's been a bit of a surprise to her she feels like feels like she's been able to use that to her advantage with her velocity started her career sale at Florida International third year here and really credits the work that Jennifer Rocha the great pitching coach has done with her here Meeks not bunting anymore, a delayed stolen base, and a stolen base against Oklahoma comes from Madison Niokas. Only the fourth steal in 10 attempts against the Sooners this year. Gotta love the aggressiveness. I think it caught Elam a little bit off guard because there was a slight pause, and it was just long enough for her to get her hand in at second. And Sale rebounds with a strikeout of Meeks. 
Strikeout number four for Shannon Sale. Look, if anybody's going to steal against Oklahoma, Nyoka's is a, a pretty good selection. Now 26 for 26 on the year. JMU is a team, 51 for 53. Well, this is game one of our quadruple header today. Coming up after this game, scheduled for 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 local, Georgia and Oklahoma State. Every game today on ESPN. Our night crew, Beth, Michelle, Jess, and Holly, Arizona, Alabama, Florida State, UCLA. And uh, breaking news for us today, tomorrow night's games are now going to be on ESPN 2. We're originally ESPNU. That's been moved up because of the conclusions of some NBA series. It's a great thing. I love that. Yeah, if you're anybody but a Washington Wizards fan, <laughs> great news for you. Are there Wizard fans? Of course there are Wizards fans, yeah. <laughs> I know at least one. Pitch hitter for James Madison here in the fourth inning. And it will be Emily Phillips in the spot of Hallie Hall. Freshman's had a nice season. Three for ten in the NCAA tournament. And a swing strike, 0 and 2. Can't believe you just took a shot at the Wizards like that. <laughs> Wizards Twitter is going to be all up on you now. Oh, no. The fear in your voice. <laughs> I'm very worried. <laughs> very concerned about the Wizards. Sixty pitches deep for sale. Nyokis at second. And ball two for Phillips. A couple of good takes by Phillips coming off the bench. Took a rise ball, took a curve ball. Worked yourself back into the count. In the air right side, Jennings will clean it up for out number two. Nobody can do Batter is Lauren Burnett, freshman catcher. Infield single to second her first time. A crown ball that Jennings made a great play on an inning ago. Looked like Burnett was out by a fraction of a step at first. She was called safe and that started the three run rally in the third. Nice job by Ron Alexander to get out of the way. The plate umpire. Foul pop to Elam. And a tie game midway through the fourth in beautiful OKC. Emotional retease in two years. <laughs> James Madison in Oklahoma. Three run home runs from Jubis and Jennings in the third inning. And we are tied at the midway point. Game one of the 2021 World Series. Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, Jalen Johnson, our entire enormous ESPN family. So thrilled to be back with you with all of our bells and whistles. UCLA, the defending national champions from 2019. Bruins are going to play the national champs from 2018, Florida State. And our final game tonight, Georgia and Oklahoma State after this. Alabama and Arizona in game three. Awesome World Series field. A lot of history and also some new kids on the block. The first ever World Series for 
Odyssey Alexander and these James Madison Dukes. Six, seven, eight for OU here in the fourth. Nicole Mendes. And a fly ball hit the other way from Mendes into the glove of Gordon. You know, it's really easy, Kevin, for teams who are coming here for the first time to implode in their first game, just look like they have so many nerves, feel paralyzed, have bad at bats, and just it's, I feel like, more normal than a team coming out looking unintimidated like JMU. Got the first three in the third, gave it right back, and then Alexander's retired four straight. We're talking to Kenny Gajewski about this yesterday. Oklahoma State head coach will see them in the next game. And they did win their first game at the World Series two years ago, but only scored three runs in the three games. And he said, I, I think we were just nervous. I don't think we were quite ready for it. Talking to James Madison yesterday, there was so much shock and awe from the players in a wonderful way that, that they were here. You got the sense at times like they didn't even necessarily expect to be here until they got here so to see them come out and do what they've done today stay as composed as they've been uh, i'm sure has gained them the respect of a whole lot of folks watching around the nation yeah i think so too it's been impressive and i think too to be able to separate yesterday where they're going through all the different media things and the day is just packed with talking to different people photos um, just emotional moments and they were able to separate what we did yesterday to game day today It's really hard to do but they were able to live in that moment and enjoy it just as much and be present here today Alexander's one two for Elam is in the dirt I mean, Do you remember your first time on this stage like how how yeah. nervy is it for a player to get here for the first time really nervy and there weren't even the upper decks here right. and not as many people because we weren't playing Oklahoma. <laughs> so there weren't as many people here on the on that day. Two and two blasted foul by Elam. And I think too, you mentioned it earlier, but JMU played in front of about a hundred fans for their regular season and then ended up playing Tennessee in the regional in front of way more fans and then Columbia had close to 3,000 fans in Missouri, and they didn't even skip a beat. Seven pitches deep to Lindsey Elam, second team all Big 12 pick. And another 2-2 will be another foul ball out of play. The bats are starting to go a little bit longer. 22 pitches in the first two innings combined for Odyssey Alexander. 45 and what have been the next inning and a third to date. And another foul ball off the bat of Elam. That's when she'll mix in that off-speed pitch, dropping it down to 61 miles an hour. But it's almost like you'd like to see her be able to hit that 55-mile-an-hour mark to where they're not making contact with it, just somewhat off the end of their bat, but they're swinging and missing it or hitting off the very end of their bat and getting a ground out instead of a foul ball. Up the ladder here. And she finally vanquishes Elam. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter how long these at-bats are. You just can't phase Odyssey Alexander going with the rise ball and getting Elam after a long at-bat to chase it. That's an explosive up movement to it. Five strikeouts for Odyssey and just three and two-thirds. Janet Johns fouls away strike one. Go, 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 go. 
John's reached on the ground ball single to shortstop. Start the run scoring rally back in the third. Another first pitch strike for Odyssey. 12 out of 17 batters have seen strike one to begin there at bat. One of those first pitch strikes was hit over the center field wall. However, the three run home run for T.R.A. Jennings in the third. <laughs> One and two. Alexander, who struck out 19 in her NCAA tournament opener with number six on the afternoon. Patty Gasso, Oklahoma head coach, will join us when we return to a tie game in OKC. presented by Capital One. Good game to start. We're tied after four, JMU in Oklahoma. Let's check in downstairs now with Jalen. Thanks, Kevin. Here with Coach Patty Gasso. Coach, you guys got down a little bit early, but what did you see in your team to get back into this one? Back, so the way we did it so quickly um, felt good, but we um, got a lot of work to do here. We're facing a very outstanding pitcher. What are you seeing in Odyssey that maybe is switching up your Just a lot of deception, whether it's speed, location, she can mix speed, she moves it all around. It's tough to really lock in on something. So we're uh, trying to have some really solid at bats and string something together, but she's outstanding. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Patty Gasso knowing that her team hasn't seen many pitchers quite like Odyssey Alexander this year, and Oklahoma and James Madison are tied. The top of the fifth, more often than not in an Oklahoma game this year, is the inning where the road team needs to score a bunch of runs to avoid getting run ruled. Not the case today, as the nine hitter Michelle Sullivan takes ball one. There's some concern down there for Patty Gasso. Sixth all time D1 wins. Only well, her team's got quite a challenge ahead of it. In these final three innings. Sullivan is sack bunt her first time. Reached on an error on the play by the third baseman Johns. That was in the middle of James Madison's three run rally. Each team with a three run home run in the third. Both of those home runs scored the eight and nine hitters. Sullivan did hold up two and two. You know, the one thing that I feel like GMU has done a really good job of all game long is swinging at strikes. They've not chased a lot of Shannon Sales pitches that have been out of the zone and she of course wants them to do that. She wants them to chase that curveball way off, wants them to chase that rise ball way up. And they've taken a lot of pitches confidently too. Can you give a sense, I know you weren't just a pitcher, but a hitter, of, of what it's like to face a pitcher like Sale and how that movement looks coming in? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing that stands out to me about her is the way that she's able to throw her rise on multiple levels like that, to where if you take that pitch, it's going to be a ball. You extend your at bat, but when it comes in, it looks like it's just going to get the top of the zone, and you feel like you have to swing, and then it has that late break where she just swung three or four inches underneath it. So to me, that's the biggest thing that separates her is being able to work that rise ball on different planes. Five strikeouts today and a foul ball right back over our heads. <laughs> I legitimately thought that was going to come in the booth for like the first time ever. I'm glad the press box isn't like five inches higher or else I would be on the floor and you'd be doing play by play for the rest of this inning. Nobody told us to bring our gloves. Meg Aronowitz forgot to tell us to bring the glove. I know, the leather. Meg, Meg blew it. Meg got all the snacks and the water, but not the gloves. There we are. I'm glad one of our 42 cameras was on Kevin and Amanda ISO duty. 
But I apologize to whichever camera operator gets stuck with that assignment. 0-2 for Kate Gordon. <laughs> I thought it was in your contract. Well, that's not supposed to be publicly revealed, <laughs> but now that we're airing dirty laundry. <laughs> Gordon a foul out to third in the first, strikeout swinging in the third. And a ground ball foul here, still 0-2. Top of the lineup battling against Sale. Only allowed two hits despite the three runs, one an infield single. And really the one big swing against her in the whole game, the home run from Jubis in the third. Is the James Madison home run hitter waiting in the wings. <laughs> Gordon could not check. Uh, another strikeout for Sale, who's cut down five in a row. Talked about a rise ball, but check out this drop ball with a little bit of curve action to it. She's able to work that curve ball. That's exactly what it is on a drop ball, but a curve ball and it moves down in the zone to give Gordon a different look. And she did work down the zone earlier with a drop ball earlier in the count too. Six strikeouts, no walks for sale. Now Jubis with a first pitch home run in the third. And not going to get another off speed pitch to start her here. Ball one. First home run for Jubis in the NCAA tournament, 11th of the year. 67th for JMU, one of the best home run hitting teams in the country. And a ground ball to shortstop. Lions cleans it up. It's a 1 2 3 fifth inning for Shannon Sale. Top of the order after snow coming up for the Sooners. Here's a fly ball from Jubis to deep right center. It is gone. A three-run blast on the first pitch from Sarah Jubis. First pitch attack for Jennings and a drive to center. This game is tied. Unseeded James Madison, number one, Oklahoma. Blow for blow in the third inning. In the history of the World Series, there's only been one win from an unseeded team in the opening round way back in 2008. The artists formerly known as Louisiana Lafayette. They beat number one Florida that year. And the Gators ended up rallying to reach the championship series after losing that game. They would fall to Arizona State and the champ series. But James Madison has taken its best shot. A tie game in the bottom of the fifth. Odyssey Alexander thrown to Taylor Snow. Jennings and Allo to follow. And the nine hitter Snow is ahead two and nothing. And one shot. Your freshman and player of the year. And your two home run leaders in the country. Nice framing. <laughs> so nice we show it twice. Honesty Alexander, four strong for JMU. On a 2 1, Snow takes up and in. Kevin, you can see how far back that Logan Newton is playing, the right fielder for JMU, just even with Taylor Snow, just so much power all throughout this Oklahoma lineup, and she's hitting the nine spot, just still respecting the power all throughout this Oklahoma lineup. It's about where she was when Otto plopped in that single a couple of innings ago. And a ground ball hooked foul here, three and two. Snow out of the nine spot with three home runs this year. 14 extra base hits. 
Oklahoma with 147 home runs as a team. And a 3-2 for Snow. And a strikeout for Alexander on a foul tip. Three straight strikeouts for Odyssey Alexander. Seven on the afternoon. Here's T.R.A. Jennings for the first time since she did this. As the big answer back, the first pitch off of Odyssey Alexander. Two on, dead center field. Able to tie up this game, the freshman who has freshman of the year, but honestly could have been one of the finalists for national player of the year. It was a shortlist finalist before it got to the top three, which Jocelyn Allo won. Get the feeling there is a national player of the year finalist at least somewhere in her future, T.R.A. Jennings. Now 11 for 19 in the tournament. Jennings a home run, Otto to single. Alexander has retired seven in a row since. Five of them strikeouts. But behind in the count here. And off speed for a 2-0 strike. And she has all that power too, Kevin, and she sits right at the top of the order in the leadoff spot. Patty Gasso moved her there earlier this season, and it was like, what were we waiting for on that move? Put her there and just haven't even really looked back. I'm taking her out of that spot. A chase for strike two. And that's the better location for a rise ball up and in on her hands. On that rise ball that she hit out of here to tie up that game, it just wasn't inside enough. It wasn't up enough. That location right there, if she can throw that and get a swing and miss, why go anywhere else? A 2-2. Two -two. Jennings to second off the glove of Niokas. And a one-out ripped single for T.R.A. Jennings. The go-ahead runner is on for Jocelyn Allo. Here's the reaction from Tuesday night when Allo won the award. This year's winner of the 2021 USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year, the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> It was emotional to watch. It was emotional to speak with Jocelyn Otto yesterday. She told us the only thing I could think of in that moment was my family, how much they sacrificed for me to be here. She said it solidified their sacrifice. Coming from all the way in Hawaii. Yeah, and then too, her dad called and Patty Gasso asked her to put it on speakerphone and she did and they both just broke down crying her dad saying I'm just so proud of you just reflecting back on every moment every dollar spent every sacrifice to be able to get to this point her father Levi that smoke to third Meeks makes the play on a hop to second for one and that's all JMU will get but a nifty force out started by Lindsay Meeks Kevin, one of the things that you have to know about Oklahoma is that their ground balls come off the bat differently. They hit the ball harder than most teams. So it looks like a routine ground ball is just leveled up a little bit at every position on the infield. And these James Madison players have been ready for it. Now the umpiring crew is getting together. Have a 5-4 fielder's choice on the play. And we're going to get, it appears, a double play. I wonder if interference is being called against Jennings, the runner at second, for her slide into second base. Now let's bring in our rules expert, Christy Cornwell, for the first time. And Christy, what do you see on this play? was called out 
And then she pops up and makes contact, therefore interfering with the throw going to first base. So the rule says runner close to home is called out. That would be the runner at first base. Great stuff, Christy. It's, it's wonderful to have you with us. Christy Cornwall will be with us all week in Oklahoma City. And you can see the contact made there, cleat to cleat, from the runner Jennings. So it ends up as a double play, and we are tied going to the sixth. Still tied at three after a pretty funky double play to end the bottom of the fifth for JMU. Christy, as you're going to chime in here, the runner, what is she supposed to do, or what, what would be a safe call versus an interference call there? Like, where would have been a better angle for her? Well, the problem on this play is when she popped up and made contact with her upper body and interfered with the throw. That's the key issue here. We Perfect. have upper body contact interfering with the throw to first base. So, so to be clear, Christy, it's not the cleat to the cleat on the slide. It's the pop up right there. So we had a pop up slide. She slid in and came up and popped as she threw the ball. She made she contact. contact. Yeah. So you scored the throw. You gonna be you gonna go with a double play? Okay, on we're gonna get it real quickly. You're gonna so point. You gonna point? Yeah. Point okay. to first base and she's out. Okay. Uh, by rule, that was a good call. We had interference by a retired runner. It was the upper body contact at second base that interfered with the throw to first base. So happy to have you, Christy, to just simplify it and teach us the way. You never know what you're going to get in a softball or baseball no. game, Kevin. Well, great to have Christy. Great to have our umpires mic'd as well. This is the rule. The umpire determines the interference was an obvious attempt to prevent a double play. It's actually not the right rule. We're looking for interference by a retired runner. Okay, so interference by a retired runner is the rule, and it's a double play, a bizarre one, but a double play all the same. And we are tied with two regulation innings to go. Heart of the order for James Madison. Shannon Sale to Odyssey Alexander. Logan Newton, Madison Nyokas to follow. Kenzie Hansen, by the way, the new catcher for Oklahoma, taking over for Lindsey Elam. Patty Gasso shifted defensively some. So there's Hansen, who started the game at first base, who takes over for Lindsey Elam, seen as the best defensive catcher for Oklahoma. Taylor Snow has come in from left field to play first. And Riley Boone has moved out to left. And there she is. Odyssey 0 for 2, reached on an error. Line out to center field. And a ground ball to third. Clean pick by Johns for out number one. Downstairs, Jalen. Guys, we've been talking a lot about Odyssey's performance in the circle, but she said she knew she could hit the ball early in life, too, because she would stand at the bus stop with a stick and a rock and throw the rock up in the air and hit it with the stick while she was waiting on the bus. That is some DIY stuff, Jay. <laughs> yes, Love that. So. Love that from Odyssey, who said her grandpa Washington saw her keep hitting the rock and said, you know, you look, you got a pretty good swing. Yeah, she said she would have blisters on her hands from it. And one of the reasons that she came to James Madison was they said, you can play a position when you don't pitch if you want. You can hit when you don't pitch. A lot of schools will say one or the other. Yeah, and in this Women's College World Series, we don't have a ton of pitchers who rank. Rachel Garcia comes to mind, and a lot of POs, a lot of pitcher onlys. I feel like we got more on our broadcast talent team than we have on the field. <laughs> <laughs> That's just outside, 3-0. and oh. Shannon Sale to Logan Newton. Sale has not walked a batter in the game. He's had some troubles. At times this year with command, 42 walks, 85 and two thirds innings coming in. I really think that she's done a nice job. You look at the scorebook or the scoreboard, she's only given up two hits. Her defense has committed a couple of errors in this game, which is abnormal for Oklahoma's D. 
Only their 18th and 19th errors of the season. Newton on a 3-1 count. Knocks one foul. Six strikeouts for the senior. Shannon Sale. Her third appearance of the postseason. One start in the regionals and a five-inning complete game to beat Washington in game two of the Supers last weekend. On a 3-2, a good take by Newton. James Madison's first walk of the game comes with one out in the sixth. I'm telling you, they've had really good eyes at the plate. And all different counts, too. 0-2 counts. They've, they've not been scared to, to take, trust their eyes, and just believe in their preparation. I'm impressed with their, their presence up at the plate today. Madison Nyokas now. On the ground to Johns at third. She gets one. And that's all. Five to four. Johns to Jennings for the second out. Good base runner out at first, though. And Nyokas, the base dealer from earlier. Nyokas with a stolen base earlier, only the fourth steal against Oklahoma this year. And there's a new catcher now. She stole the base on Elam. Back in the fourth, and now it's Hansen behind the plate with Meeks standing at it. <laughs> there goes Nyokas, and she is out. 26 for 26, no more. How about that defensive trick pulled out of the deck by Patty Gasso? Well, they moved Hansen from first base to back behind the plate. She has one of the best arms in the country. This is pinpoint precision to be able to catch her. Lyle, bro, JDH, out in right field. Tie game to start this tournament. It's what you want. The third inning is the difference maker. Two home runs in that inning. And talk about the bounce back performances after giving up the home runs. Both of these pitchers have been lights out. It's going to be a good finish here. Kevin, Amanda, we're jealous. It must be fun up there. Pretty fun in right field, too, I think. But yeah, <laughs> we're not having a bad time up here, Courtney. We're looking forward to seeing you all in between games. Georgia, Oklahoma State coming up next. We did get a look during the break at that cost stealing play because going to break I think we both thought oh Nyokas is safe slowed it down she was out good call by Cameron Ellison and the caught stealing ended the top of the sixth Odyssey Alexander to the heart of the Oklahoma order first it is Kinsey Hansen who threw out Nyokas to end the inning and takes ball one Oklahoma's 53rd game of the year only the third time they have not been leading at the end of five innings. They've trailed twice. They've been tied once. To Kevin, that Kinsey Hansen is a player who gets a little overshadowed on this Oklahoma team. And then we asked Patty Gasso, in fact, you know, because you have Allo, the National Player of the Year, you have Jennings, the National Freshman of the Year. Like, who are the other players that maybe don't get talked about as much that deserve? That extra recognition and first one to come to mind was Kenzie Hansen. Had that caught stealing, of course she's going to be the one to lead off this next inning. And there's ball two. Hansen, an eight-game hit streak coming into the game, an eight-game RBI streak as well. Second-team All-American, a catcher. Great Deja Mulipola, Olympian for Arizona on the first team. We'll see her later tonight. 2-1. And Alexander picks up another swinging strike. The fearlessness of this young woman in the circle. Incredible. 
side. Kinsey Hansen is aboard. Oklahoma has the go-ahead run at first with nobody out in the sixth. An off-speed pitch that's just up in the zone, and, and Kevin, we've seen this a couple of times, that Odyssey Alexander will get a swing and a miss. That is just a, a major swing and a miss. Oklahoma's not even close, and on a rise ball, and then the next pitch, they go to this off-speed pitch, and Oklahoma hits a gr hard ground ball to the left side. Not a big fan of that pitch calling. I'm wondering if she just swung at a rise ball that was up and in her hands, go right back to that and challenge her on that pitch again. Instead, an off-speed pitch out and over the plate, and she barrels it up. Ends up instead as Oklahoma's sixth hit. Kinsey Kelso will pinch run at first. This has been, if not the game of her life, certainly one of them. And there are a lot of great options for Odyssey that we've seen in the postseason. Now she's got to deal with Jada Coleman. And Coleman whiffs on strike one. See Lindsay Meeks playing up the line, just anticipating a possible bunt situation and honoring Coleman's speed, too. There's the bunt. It is foul. It is strike two. So Meeks makes some great defensive plays in the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. Started a double play in the fifth with the second out called on interference by the runner Jennings. Two strikes on Coleman, who is 0 for 2. And a ground ball back to Alexander. She goes to second and gets the out there. As a former pitcher, I know you were about ready to jump out of the booth there. <laughs> I wanted to hop up to go get it to keep it from being a hit with her because this is such a hard play. After she releases the ball and the way that Coleman just drives the ball into the ground to create that high hop, she robs Coleman of a hit because she's ready to field her position, because she took the time on her own in her backyard to pitch into a cemented well to field ground balls and get that defensive work. She's just so hard to get anything past. How happy do you think Grandpa Washington is thinking about the cement blocks oh. and all the bounces out in the yard that Odyssey Alexander worked on over the years, watching back home in Virginia. His granddaughter has gained a whole lot of fans today. But she's got a whole lot of trouble in front of her in the sixth. Grace Green, the pinch hitter for Grace Lyons. And a first pitch strike at 70. Green, a former third team All-American who is now primarily a pinch hit bat for this team. All-American in 2019. The 484 on base percentage. 735 slugging off the bench. 19 hits, nine extra bases. Green on loads, and Alexander burns her with strike two. I had a pinch hitter come in and pinch hit against me. I'm going back to my best stuff. Up and in on the hands with that rise ball, throwing a screwball two. Inside corner, gas, getting ahead 0-2. Not thinking off speed anymore. I don't want her to throw it. <laughs> Go to that rise ball. She does, and Green fouls it off. Is location there, is that about where Odyssey wants it? She threw it a bit outside or toward the middle of the plate. I like the height on it. I would have liked to have seen it just continuing to climb the ladder up and in on her hands. Pitch number 99 coming. The morning turned afternoon for Odyssey Alexander, the unseated Dukes. Green pops it up, and pitch number 100 will also come to Grace Green on 0-2. And they actually have a unique situation with how they call pitches in the sense they use Coach Herzig, Jennifer Herzig, to actually call pitches, and then Coach Morris, who's actually the pitch coach, the pitching coach. They work hand-in-hand. -hand. They worked 
collectively to be able to call the best game. And with Coach Morris being the pitching coach, she's more mechanics oriented. Also, probably going to be down there pre-game understanding what pitch is working the best, be able to relay that information to Coach Herzig, who actually is a hitting coach too, so they feel comfortable in what she spots in hitters and how to find their weaknesses and being able to work in tandem. And then the head coach, Coach Laporte, moves the defense. And Libby Morris will get to the circle after pitch 100. And Oklahoma will come out of their dugout during the break. Fire up this pro crimson and cream crowd. Downstairs, Jalen. Guys, Coach Laporte is going to the home play umpire trying to get him to do something about Oklahoma continuing to come out of their dugout after JMU got that um, warning earlier. So just something to keep an eye on. Hey, Jalen, good eye. Ron Alexander did tell the dugout to move back. He issued that warning to JMU back in the third. One and two now, a rise ball high after the meeting from Morris. And the dirt, good pick by Burnett of a wayward pitch. And it was that same sequence again. Way out of the zone, rise ball, and then she goes to that off-speed drop ball. This time it's more in the dirt. So two errant pitches, a rise ball that's way out of the zone, and then an off-speed drop ball that bounces in. Eighth pitch coming to Green. Coleman with great speed at first. And Green swings through strike three, another rise ball. That's the location. If she just would have thrown that pitch two or three pitches ago, I believe she would have gotten Lions to strike out earlier. This rise ball up and in to these right-handed hitters. They've been swinging underneath it all game long. We're still late in this game. I'm just getting the swing and miss. Eight strikeouts for Alexander. One shy of a season high for any team against Oklahoma this year. Arizona State had nine back in February. Batter is Mendez, Coleman on the run, and Jada Coleman steals second. Moving the time run one base closer on Coleman's 20th steal. I like the risk that both of these coaches are, are taking a little bit. We've seen them call some steals, trying to move a runner into scoring position. This game has been so tight, just only scoring has been a couple of home runs, so 60 feet closer to scoring, important in this game. Well, Coleman is certainly able to score in a single now with her great speed. And Nicole Mendes, who's done it time and again here in the postseason, He's going to try to drive her in. This was four years ago in the finals against Florida. Her first of now a five-year career. Home runs in each of the two games. Big hit after big hit for Nicole Mendez. Pettigasso says, look, this is the time of the year when Nicole Mendez becomes one of the fan favorites because of the joy and passion she shows during the postseason. 234th game of a decorated Oklahoma career and a 2-0 count. Mendez pops it up into center field traveling out to Sullivan and the James Madison Dukes and the Oklahoma Sooners are all squared away going to the seventh inning. The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Seven hundred and thirty days later, the World Series has proven to live up to the hype. The unseeded Dukes of James Madison toe to toe with the nation's number one team and the juggernaut that is Oklahoma softball. An extraordinary way to start the Women's College World Series, which is presented by Capital One. 
Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, Jalen Johnson, our entire ESPN crew. So thrilled to be with you. We might be three outs away from a winner one way or another. Maybe we'll have extras. Six, seven, eight for James Madison in this tie game against Shannon Sale and Oklahoma. Dukes 39 and two, Sooners 50 and two. And despite the incredible season of James Madison, I don't think this was anywhere near the top of likeliest scenarios. I certainly didn't have this at the top of my likely scenario list going into the game, but James Madison has come to play and then some. In, it's just impressive again when you can play your game on this field in your first ever women's college World Series game and that's exactly what they're doing. They're not changing anything. They're not trying to reinvent the wheel because they're at the World Series. They're playing their game. Meeks on a one two out to left. Uh oh a bad jump for Boone but she goes back and gets it. Riley Boone almost overshot it but was able to make the play and left. Yeah, she took about four or five steps in and then was like, nope, uh-uh, got to go back. And luckily recovered. I thought for a second I had a chance to get down because of how far in she was coming. Did not start the game in left field, came in defensively an inning ago. Now Phillips, <laughs> strike one. And contextually, you think about what this win would mean if James Madison in its first ever World Series game could take down one of the great programs ever in college softball. Certainly the last few years, it feels like Oklahoma and UCLA have been the class of the nation. Sooners World Series champs in 16 and 17 here for the fifth straight time, ninth in 10 years. James Madison's first game ever on this diamond. There's a strike to Phillips, one and two. Going to have to find a run somewhere, though, and since the home run from Jubis, Shannon Sale is locked in. Not a lot of hit since that home run back in the third. Hit batter, walk, nothing more. I've been able to work her curveball in these later innings more right at the knees gotten a couple of calls in this hit bat on both sides of the plate with that curveball right at the knees and it's a good spot good location to complement her rise ball if she can throw it a little bit lower. Two and two for Phillips. Down she goes. Seventh strikeout, Shannon Sale. Yeah, this is that curveball, and it's a pitch right now that I feel like Shannon Sale can spot anywhere she wants in any count on both sides of the plate, right at the knees. Such a good location, and she's gotten more and more comfortable with that pitch as the game has gone on. Sale with a strike fouled away from Lauren Burnett. 100th pitch coming for Shannon Sale, who has only thrown more than five innings now three times this season. 17 and 0, 131 ERA, but because Oklahoma wins so many games by run rule, this is only your third time past the fifth. Looks like she's been waiting to get past the fifth all year. Oklahoma's going to need one to win it. Elam, Johns, and Snow. Anybody gets on, it'll be Jennings in the bottom of the seventh. The sport may have never seen an offense quite like this, but Oklahoma has been held in check today. Twelve and a half runs and hits per game in the NCAA tournament. The strikeout number, that's not per game, that's total. Twelve strikeouts at the plate in five games coming into today. But Odyssey Alexander has punched out eight and held the Sooners in check. She'll have to do so for one more inning to send this game to extras. Home runs in the third inning, a three-run home run from Sarah Jupis at the top, a three-run home run from T.R.A. Jennings in the bottom, and that's been it. The first time this season, 
in 53 games that Oklahoma has been tied after six. And only trailed after six innings once. They lost that game to Oklahoma State. Lindsey Elam re-enters in the seventh spot. She'll lead off the bottom of the seventh. And Elam takes a strike from Odyssey Alexander. 107 pitches now for Alexander. Has struck out eight. And perhaps just as impressively, has only walked one. Allo back in the first. Elam a little blooper. Back to Odyssey for out number one. You know, Patty Gasso, when Jalen talked to her back in the fourth inning, used the word deceptive whenever she talked about Odyssey Alexander and what she was seeing out of her. You can tell that she's been able to work multiple different spots against these hitters for Oklahoma. She's not missed over the plate, been able to mix speeds when she needs to. But to me, it's just been that up and in rise ball to these right handed hitters that's made all of her other pitches that much better. Now, Jana Johns. Infield single and a strikeout. Off speed for ball one. Eleven home runs on the year for Johns. One here in the tournament. Hits number 110 from Odyssey. And another swinging strike. Her 733rd pitch of the postseason. Seven starts, 44 to third innings. One and two. And to think she wasn't highly recruited. Coach Laporte told us that she's from a small town in Virginia, and it was Mickey Dean who was the head coach at the time. He went to a state championship in, Lynch, er, in Lynchburg, Virginia, to watch somebody else play. Happened to stumble upon Odyssey, invited her to camp, and she, they found a hidden gem. It was between JMU and Lawrence and Longwood, and then Division Three Virginia Wesleyan. <laughs> And a strikeout is Odyssey Alexander's ninth of the game. Everybody in the state of Virginia and everybody in every state in the country is wishing they had seen this girl pitch in high school. We've seen her move the ball up in the zone, but check how she gets right at the knees. Backdoor curveball, inside corner, and she gets the call. Nine strikeouts, one walk against this Oklahoma lineup. Hard to believe. There's a fly ball from Snow to left. And the Dukes and the Sooners are not done. We've waited more than 700 days for a World Series game to finish. What's one more in it? After this, whenever this thing ends, <laughs> Oklahoma State and Georgia, that was supposed to be a 1.30 local first pitch. Uh, that ain't going to happen, but that game will be on ESPN about a half hour or so after this one ends, whenever that is. Extra innings between James Madison and its first ever World Series game and the number one team in the country, Oklahoma. Second extra inning game of the year for each team. JMU beat Liberty in the regionals in 10. Oklahoma lost to Georgia in nine. Michelle Sullivan, the nine hitter, swinging through a Shannon Sale pitch as we get the ninth inning, or the eighth inning, beg your pardon, underway. Number nine hitter Sullivan, who reached in an error on that sacrifice bunt back in the third. All right, Lindsey Elam came into the game as a re-entry after Riley Boone had come into play left. Oklahoma's brought in another left fielder for her. Now that's Mackenzie Donahue. Very good hitter in her own right. 0-2 from Sale is taken. James Madison still hitless since the Jubis home run in the third. Jubis due up third in this inning. Sullivan Gordon and then Sarah Jubis.
Patty Gasso told us she felt like her pitchers were in their best zone this season. Inspired by the great performance from the freshman Nicole May, Sale has upped her game. And she continues to up her pitches. Another rise ball strikeout, eight punch outs for Shannon Sale today. Here we go, Carrie. Yeah, you can see how that pitch not only moves up in the zone, but it had little curve action to it as well. She's able to blend those two movements to get a pitch that has been unhittable today. Kate Gordon, a couple of strikeouts, swinging 0 for 3. Amazing for JMU that they've made it this far. And they really haven't had production from Gordon, who is just 2 for 24 in the postseason. Dealing with Sale, who has distributed her outs nicely. One of those flyouts do include pop outs as well, and there have been a whole host of those, not exactly a cavalcade of wall testers off the bats of these hitters. And you can tell how much confidence that Coach Laporte has in Kate Gordon, two for 24 in the NCAA tournament, yet still has the confidence to keep her there. Player with a lot of experience, blue collar, country girl, Coach Laporte talked about her. And a 3 0 count. Sale has only walked one today, and she will get a visit from Jennifer Rocha, the Oklahoma pitching coach. Delightfully, we have our first baby shark of the World Series playing right now. <laughs> so we're truly back. <laughs> it's a staple, huh? There we go. I don't know if that's the approved baby shark dance, but it's what will count for now. Saw a couple of empty bleacher seats behind those folks, and there are not many of those. Capacity is now about 12,500 here at Hall of Fame Stadium. And Seems like we got about 12,497 for this one. What a crowd. Many of them wearing crimson and cream. A strike called to Gordon. You know I'm a pitcher and I want that pitch, but I was also a hitter and I'd be really mad if that pitch was called on me in a 3-0 count. That's, that's not, in my opinion, a strike. A little too long. Should have been a four pitch walk instead. And a 3 1, Gordon dribbles it foul and sails back in the count. Because that's what happens. Because the home plate umpire called the pitch before a strike, then the next pitch, even though she doesn't have two strikes, she didn't have to swing at it. But she's thinking, okay, I'm going to swing at this one a little lower, too. You just expand the zone down. So making her bring it up. Gordon's perspective shifted as she waits for a 3 2. And a fly ball to the left center off the bat of Gordon. Coleman at the wall and it's gone. Who needs a walk when you can run around the bases? The 69th career home run for Kate Gordon. She breaks the CAA record all time. And oh, by the way, she gives James Madison the lead in the eighth. Do you have goosebumps yet? Kate Gordon on a full count was ahead 3-0, had a couple of strikes, and then it made it full count, and she hits a bomb. One of the most positive players on this JMU team, a senior, one of their leaders, and of course, Odyssey Alexander and all of her teammates are loving it because they just got the lead in the Women's College World Series. The best hitter in the 20 year history of this softball program has just delivered its biggest hit. You talked about the faith that Lauren Laporte has in Kate Gordon. That's why she left Kate in the leadoff spot. 
And that faith was rewarded in an extraordinary way. We've got a member of the Oklahoma training staff now out to check on Mackenzie Donahue, who crashed into the wall on that home run. Remember, Donahue came in this inning as a defensive replacement. Well, that's Coleman. And the left and center fielders converging on that play. Like she was looking up at the ball, lost track of where she was and just ran right into the fence. You know, we've seen Jada Coleman rob a home run before. I thought maybe, just maybe, there was a chance for her to do it on that on that one. She has saved Chad Sales Bacon before Coleman, but this one was too tall a task. Looks like Donahue is going to stay in the game. But the home run for Kate Gordon, her 69th career, she breaks what was a tie with Drexel's Linda Rush for the all-time Colonial Athletic Association record. Her first hit and 14 at-bats. And it gives the unseated James Madison Dukes the lead on number one Oklahoma in the eighth inning. First hit since the home run from this batter, Sarah Jubis back in the third. Third time in four games, Sale has given up multiple home runs and a start. into foul ground. John's playing the sun and she just jumped too far. Ball came down near her head. Not likely to be an error, but we'll keep the at bat alive. Yeah, tough play going up against her own third base dugout, trying to shade the sun with her glove and trying to find the fence and just figure out where she is at in the field. So that's back to back at bats that in a very different way have been extended. That 3 0 pitch that we thought was ball four to Gordon called a strike. Two pitches later, the home run. Now Jubis on a 2 2 with a punch shot, two second. You know, there's only been three hits in this game for JMU. Two have been home runs, and then the other one has been an infield single. Kind of sounds like uh, Major League Baseball in 2021. <laughs> Home runs are nothing. It's working for the Dukes. They are three outs away. And this young woman's going to be in the circle trying to get those. Odyssey Alexander. They're going to help her cause as she takes strike one. Alexander 0 for three. Two. Just looked at my lineup to see again and remember who Oklahoma will have coming up in the bottom half of the inning. They got one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Going to be Jennings to lead it off, who answered the other JMU home run with a home run of her own, then Olo, then Hansen. And the top three are going to bat against Odyssey Alexander, needing a run to tie and two to win. James Madison needs three outs for one of the great upsets in the history of this World Series after this swing from Kate Gordon. Kate Gordon was two for 24 in the NCAA tournament before that home run to give her team the lead in extras. It took 20 years for James Madison to get to the World Series. 
And they're not just here to see the sights. The Dukes have the lead in extras, three outs away from one of the all-time stunners in this stadium. But T.R.A. Jennings is going to lead it off after the home run from Kate Gordon to give JMU the lead. And the last time Oklahoma trailed, this is what Jennings did with two on in the third. Yeah, they traded three run home runs. Sarah Jubis hit one in the top half of the inning, and then T.R.A. Jennings was able to answer back right away again. The National Freshman of the Year this season. Only twice in the history of this tournament has the number one seed lost game one. UCLA in 06, Florida in 08. T.R.A. Jennings and Odyssey Alexander. And away we go in the bottom of the eighth with strike one. Jennings is two for three. Also singled in the fifth. Has been unstoppable in this NCAA tournament. Two home runs, seven doubles in the six games. What on earth is going through the mind of Odyssey Alexander right now? You know, because she's been so steady, I don't think that she's gotten too high. She hasn't gotten too low. I feel like she's been exactly the same in the third inning or the first inning or here in the eighth inning. So I think just, I don't want to win. She's such a competitor. I want to win and one pitch at a time. She thrived with the atmosphere in Knoxville in the regionals. Thrived with the raucous atmosphere in Columbia in the Super Regionals. This is a different kind of stage. She has been every bit as good, if not better, considering the lineup. Two and two for Jennings. I asked Odyssey that exact question yesterday. What goes through your mind when you're in the circle? And she kind of looked around and said, really nothing. I'm just out there doing what I know how to do, what I've been doing since I was a little girl. So even though this is a bigger stage, they have proven that they haven't been much phased by it. And Jalen, she has looked completely unfazed through 117 pitches. Trying to dispose of Jennings, the leadoff hitter. And a ground ball off Alexander to second, and Jennings is out, 1-4-3. How about that pinball wizardry for JMU? Alexander to Niokas to Shiflet, and Lauren Laporte's gonna check on her starting pitcher. Jennings hit this hard and has a little bit of bad luck in the sense that it bounces off of Alexander right to the second baseman. I mean, it, the, the luck of this is to be perfectly right in the right spot at the right time. And even Alexander giving the fist pump. Like, I know I just kind of took that one for the team in a different way, but I'll take the out. That ground ball could have taken off her leg and she'd say to Lauren Laporte, I'm finishing this game. There's no way you're getting Odyssey out of the circle right now. Oklahoma State and Georgia coming up next. We hope that the fans of those teams have not minded the wait. Jocelyn Otto, National Player of the Year. Tying run. Did she go? No. If there is any player in the country that you could pick to bat now, Oklahoma or not, this might be the selection. 2-0. How much do you Compete, how much do you give in here with a 2 0 count to Alo? Gotta be so careful. Can't give in much. That's what I was gonna say, too, is that you can't win it with just one pitch and just hyper one because she's a type of hitter that is just looking for a mistake. Down by a run, extra innings at the World Series. Can't afford a mistake here to her. She'll hit it out of the park. Got a 3 0 green light here if you're Patty Gasser? I win, yeah. Doesn't matter. Time run is on. Winning run will step up. Kinsey Hansen with one out in the eighth. Pitching around her a little bit, just choosing to make somebody else beat you. 
which is National Player of the Year for a reason. And they have so many other good players, but I don't think you want to end this game thinking, man, I really wish we wouldn't have pitched to Jocelyn Allen. Put her on first base and pitch to somebody else. It's an unusual situation to pitch around somebody and bring the running run to the plate, but Jocelyn Otto is an unusual situation of a hitter. And Patty Gasso has brought her team together. Looked like she was ready to pinch run for Otto, called her over. Well, Joss is going to stay out there at first, actually. So Otto will stay at first, representing the tying run with one out. Double play would end it. Home run would end it. Anything in between would bring up Jada Coleman. Kenzie Hansen is one for three. Kenzie Hansen is on an eight game RBI streak that she has not extended to this point. And she takes aim at a high one for strike one. It's about an 18 hour drive from Harrisonburg to OKC. Flights are a little more convenient. But however they've gotten here, the Dukes faithful are loud. Hanson a pop up behind the plate that will sneak out of play and it is strike two. Well, a good rise ball is continuing to work up in the zone and made some pop ups, foul balls, swings and misses. Been a consistent all game long. I think I know what you're going to say, but are you going back there? I would try to expand the zone more up and in on her hands a little bit higher. Nine strikeouts today for Odyssey Alexander. And Hansen skewers one foul. I'm really convinced that one of those foul balls is going to just continue to roll up the net and into. Our booth. Like a ski ball situation, like yeah. our booth is the 50 point hole. <laughs> yeah. Exactly we'll like have, that. We'll have a few more chances this weekend. A small but vocal contingent wearing purple and gold behind the first base dugout. Perhaps they can hardly believe what they're seeing. 0 2 to Hansen is in the air to left field. Gordon is there, the center fielder, Sullivan, a late break. And it is out number two. The Dukes are one out away. We have seen 30 years of softball here at the Women's College World Series. If James Madison can pick up one more out, it would rank among the most stunning results in the history of this tournament against a team that a lot of folks think could be the best ever. Jada Coleman takes strike one. If you believe this score line was going to happen, you probably reside in or around Harrisonburg, Virginia. Oh and one. Ball one. At times this season has appeared a coronation for Oklahoma. They are one out away from falling into the losers bracket after game one. A fly ball in the short left. Gordon is there and James Madison has done it. One of the greatest upsets in three decades of the World Series. The unseated Dukes have stormed the party in OKC. What a stunner to start off the 2021 Women's College World Series. Wow. 
Of course, the set was tone. Of course, the tone was set by Odyssey Alexander in the circle from pitch number one that she threw. Their offense came out swinging early in the count. They weren't intimidated. We let off the show by saying JMU didn't want to be called the Cinderella, and they proved it today. And the Oklahoma Sooners are not done, but they are going to have to claw their way back from a loser's bracket in Oklahoma City after Odyssey Alexander and Kate Gordon deliver the moments of their lives. The first game in the history of James Madison's World Series career. 20 years as a program, their first trip here. They get this Oklahoma team, this Oklahoma offense scoring more than 11 runs per game, and they get it done. Our Capital One rewarding performance. This final out to Kate Gordon in the left. And the rewarding performance, the entire JMU team for their energy, staying committed to what got them here, their competitive, fiery, gritty team that was just so much fun to watch. They knocked off the nine seed Tennessee, knocked off the eight seed Missouri in Super Regionals, and just knocked off the one seed Oklahoma, a team that had 50 wins and just two losses coming into this game. Odyssey Alexander delivers the game of her life in the circle, and she is downstairs now with our Jalen Johnson. Thank you, Kevin. Odyssey, you guys did it. 4-3 win over Oklahoma, probably an outcome that nobody other than your fans probably thought was going to happen. How did you guys do it? Um, that was fight. That was grit. That was heart. That was passion. And the big hits, um, Sarah Jubis and Kate Gordon at the end. She, Kate was due. Um, she's been struggling a little bit, but, I mean, she needed that at bat, and she <laughs> did what she needed to do. So I can't be more proud of just this whole team and the um, fight that we all have. And you told me yesterday that when you're in the circle, there's not much really going through your mind. Did that change today in this moment? Um, a little bit because, you know, it's <laughs> I've never been in an atmosphere like this, but I'm mean, just embracing it, enjoying the moment, and focusing on each pitch. And I know there are some people at home who are watching you right now, your grandfather, your grandmother. What do you want to say to them watching um, you at home? I love you guys, and that was for you, Pops. Thank you so much. Go celebrate with your team. Odyssey Alexander in a small town in Virginia, thrown against a well in her backyard. Washington and Emily, her grandparents, I can't even imagine how you're feeling now, but you're going to see your granddaughter in prime time on ESPN2 tomorrow against the winner of Oklahoma State and Georgia. The World Series turned upside down, Amanda Scarborough, right <laughs> off the bat. Just an incredible game, so many wow moments, and JNU being able to keep that lead with the Kate Gordon home run, unbelievable. Well, what's next? 4-3 James Madison over Oklahoma to start the World Series. Oklahoma State and Georgia, good luck following that act. That game's coming up next. <laughs> First, though, we're going to check in with our national champions in the studio, Caleb Rowe, Jenny Dalton-Hill, alongside Courtney Lyle. Gang, 